I can tell you from the bottom of my heart because it's the thing that I miss most. So I've got to do it big. I've got to make her remember that she was once on stage and was once in demand. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome Canadian famous, American living, the amazing, the wonderful, the mother of comedy and, and children. <laughs> I saw Alpha. <laughs> Oh, stop. You guys sit down. Oh my gosh. No, this is too much. Stop it. Ah, oh my God. <laughs> you guys paid. You paid. Relax. 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 Hi, so Alpha. Hello. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. This is so cool. It's so nice to connect. Man, I am so excited to be connected to you because this is where we live now. Where, where, are, you, where are you connected now? Because I'm in Johannesburg. Where are you? I'm in Los Angeles. So. So you are. It, Do you have to say Los Angeles with like that because you, you changed your, the way you normally speak because you said Los, Los Angeles. <laughs> Los, mean, Angeles. Los Angeles. Is that the way you say it? No, I, when I, I mean, I've never been to LA. LA. So when I go, I want to say it right. Here's the thing. If you, is that the way you say it? If you want it to sound like cool, then you have to go LA. Drop your voice a little. <laughs> really check it out. Check the letters. I wanna, if I you live here, like it's I Los have Angeles. Enough money. <laughs> I want to sound like I have enough money. I don't really need the job. Book oh. me if you feel my talent is appropriate. Let me give well, how that. do I sound there? Let me give you that reading. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ne next week, I'll be going to LA. <laughs> You've really got to eat. You know, I mean, I know you, maybe you twirl your beard a little bit and like just look off to the side and then usually throw in like a no big deal. It doesn't even matter. Who cares? Who cares? It just, just look like you're busy. You're busy. Yeah. So I know. I know that you may be. You're putting on this act for me, but I know you're busy. So <laughs> we at the Jamesburg International Comedy Festival are so, so, so grateful for your time. Devastated and heartbroken that we don't have you in person, but we are so, so, so grateful for your time. And, and therefore, I think the appropriate place to start is what has been your favorite thing about the COVID-19 <laughs> lockdown experience? <laughs> Um, okay, well, here it went through stages, right? Because we thought at first it was going to be a couple of weeks. And when it started, honestly, I had a six month old. And so I was going out and doing shows until 1am and coming home, and then waking up at like three in the morning and five in the morning and set like, so I was totally exhausted. And when they said like, everything's closing for two weeks, I was like, Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> Two weeks where I can go to sleep early. It's going to be so nice. Just, now everyone would be like, isn't it the worst? I'm like, I know it's the worst. Oh my God, I'm having such a good time. <laughs> then two weeks, done. two weeks was over. And then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm revived. You know, like the bags have like disintegrated under my eyes. I'm ready for more comedy. So I think, I guess like now that this is just sort of where we live, you know, we all live in little boxes of our lives. Um, the thing that I'm enjoying the most is I don't have more time on my hands like other people do because I have a kid, my husband works full time, so I literally have no childcare and I'm just like doing it all myself and trying to do my own career. What I'm loving though and I'm taking special pleasure in is being able, when I go on my daily multiple walks and I'm wearing my mask and it's sunny here in LA, so I'm wearing <laughs> my sunglasses and I can just give so much shade to anybody and no one can tell. Like. My natural desire is to want to side eye people and like look them down. But then, you know, you have to be a nice person and smile. And like, you know, when people don't share the sidewalk, I'm like, <laughs> but now I can be like, Ugh. and no one can tell. I have a mask on. I have my sunshine glasses on. I can throw as much shade as I want. I'm so free. It's freed me. I love life. I, I, I love that you found, you found your truth hiding behind a mask. I love that you have been able to express, express your truth. I personally, I, I, like, I like masks for a, whole, for a whole different reason. I haven't had to offer anybody a stick of gum uh, for over 100 days in South Africa. I just, I just it's hell. wonderful. Because I, I, bad breath is like a pet peeve for me. Like if you have bad breath, what are you doing outside of your house? Right? You got bad Brush breath, them, floss just, them, rinse them, do something. Come on, investigate, <laughs> investigate. <laughs> Like, uh, do an investigation, find the source of the problem and apply treatment to the source. Because you say brush, but I know people that brush every day and still be stanking out the whole place for no, and it's those people that don't have any respect for your personal space. Oh, and those they get right in. And leave. the more you move away, they're like, oh, they're moving away, let me move closer. And so by the end, you're doing like a matrix back bend and they're like right in. It's like, gosh, take the hint, drink some water. Most people are dehydrated. This is the big tip of the world. Hydrate, yes. baby, yes. hydrate. So uh, hydration, I think, is going to be our takeout for the day. Uh, for, for, for the day, yeah. hydration, I think, is definitely going to be. People thought this was going to be comedy. Be this is just health, okay? This is just a health talk, okay? One oh one, people. 
101. <laughs> Hydrate. Hydrate. That's, I, I'm, look, I'm, I, in fact, in fact, you, you can never be take too a safe. Moment. Let's take a moment. Go Rams. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, who are the Rams? This is my water, my water cup for home because it's really big. The Los Angeles NFL team is the Rams, one of them. And I'm not even really a fan. It's just a nice big cup for when you have to hydrate. And so whenever I do Zooms and stuff, I'm always like, there's people like, oh, Rams fan. I'm like, oh, yeah, big, big time, big time. Throw the ball. Let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's get into this because we don't have a lot of time. We were obviously devastated that, that we couldn't be with you. I appreciate these little boxes because nobody knows what the real shape of my body is. I haven't had to iron anything below the nipples. And up here, I could be a bodybuilder. I could be a fitness enthusiast or I could be a cholesterol junkie, which is technically what I am. So I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been enjoying it. I think what, what's interesting for me to chat to you is you spent a brief time in South Africa doing some stand up, and uh, you kind of came in, you kind of came in like, 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 like sneaky, you like snuck in, like, like we were not ready. And I think that that, that happens a lot where, and especially in comedy where if somebody doesn't get introduced, because I've noticed that, that in the US particularly, the, the introduction of an act is, is like, I, I, I performed at a show in New York where this guy on his bio, the only thing they said was once featured on BuzzFeed. And I was like, we announced that? Is that what you guys do over here? You featured once as, on, on a website and you, you, like, you're not even giving us the date or the details. <laughs> so so, so you, you snuck in without an introduction. And I think so many South Africans, particularly comedians, were so wonderfully surprised by your style, your confidence, and, and just, just the way you do the thing. So let's, let's talk about your journey of comedy, specifically in South Africa. We had expectations of you, which were very low. <laughs> what were your expectations of us? I like to come in with real low expectations because there's only one direction to go. Um, I, well, the reason I was actually in, I came twice. The reason I came both yeah. times is because my dad was working in South Africa for half the year um, as a professor okay. at the University of Pretoria. So I was coming actually, like the overall reaching thing was for family vacation, you know, and family like get together. Um, and then of course, as a comedian, I was like, but there's clubs, right? Like uh, maybe I just uh, step away from my family for some time. Um, but I was, I really, I mean, I, I knew, you know, obviously Trevor Noah, that's like a, especially in the States here, that's a known, known, known from South Africa. And I knew that there was like a, a scene in South Africa, but I didn't really know too much about it. And can I just tell you, I didn't even have low expectations, but like it exceeded, exceeded my wildest dreams for so many reasons, because not only was the level of talent extremely high, like the ratio of good to bad in South Africa is like unbelievable. Like I, I, I tell people here all the time, I'm like, you guys, you don't understand. South Africa is like, like how Chicago has like so much talent. You know what I mean? Like so many people on SNL, like so many rappers and stuff are from Chicago. I keep telling people here, South Africa is the international Chicago where you're going to start to see people coming through. And I think America is going to be taken by storm by you guys. So that's, that's one thing. Great. Talent is good. But like as an in, a comedian coming in from outside of the community, everyone was like so ridiculously welcoming. And for me, like I'm, I'm, I grew up in Canada. I was born in Nigeria, but I grew up in Canada and then moved to the States. And so where I grew up, there was not a lot of diversity. So I came to South Africa and like, you know, the horror stories of South Africa that internationally get, you know, talked about and stuff. And I know some other stuff because my dad was Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so let's just, I just need a very clear picture here before you get yourself into trouble. Mm. So, so you, your dad, I'm assuming, who, who's Nigerian if you were my born dad, in Nigeria? My dad's Nigerian. Your dad. So your dad is, is, is a Nigerian man working mm. in South Africa. Mm. And, and, and he's still telling you horror stories. No, no, not my a dad. Nigerian man. Not my dad. What so I'm who, who told you this International, story? like, you know, like American news the room, anywhere the in Africa. Okay. Media is always like about Nigeria, about South Africa, about Rwanda, all these places that are like, ooh, scary, horrible, True. whatever. You're gonna die. Right? And then you go there and you're like, has anybody who's doing these stories been to this place? So, but even more, like I came to South Africa and all of a sudden I saw people, a whole group of people who looked exactly like me, which didn't happen when I was growing up in Canada. And I was like, my people, I found them. <laughs> 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 I honestly, I felt so at home in South Africa. And then the comedy community was so welcoming and so loving. And like, 
everyone there gets along and like has a good laugh and has good love for each other, like true good love for each other. Yeah. They just like brought yeah. me in. Like I had always been there. It was honestly one of the most phenomenal experiences of doing comedy I've ever, like in any place I've ever done. I loved it. I love so it. We, so, so a guy named Ryan Hardiff baptized it with the name comedy radery. He said, we've got comedy radery in South Africa where, comedy where the radery. industry is one of the f comedy radery, like, like, Com oh, I got you, got you, got you, got you. Like comedy. Co yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a South African, we can stretch things in South Africa. The, 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 <laughs> the links don't have to be close. We can, we can put some distance between the, between the dots there. We're not, we're not, we're not scared. I but I, I think, I think that you're, you're absolutely right. What, what is, what, what is the, the, the obvious difference and the obvious question then is, 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 is the scene in LA not the same? What is the scene in LA like? I mean, the difference is, um, I feel like a lot of the people in South Africa are from South Africa, right? So everyone in, is in the know, if you will, about what's going on. Whereas in LA, LA is a real, like, you know, people come to LA to make it in acting, in comedy, in, in music, all these different places. So everyone's from some, not everyone, but a lot of people are from somewhere else. And so you're kind of getting these little like cliques of people who you live near each other or you have the same sort of thing or you go to the same shows. And it's great, but also LA is so spread out. And so if you want to do a bunch of shows, like you might have to drive for an hour between each show to do all these things. So there's less of this sort of physical scene. Do you know what I mean? I find. I, I started my comedy career in Canada and in Toronto where I was before I was here, everyone's taking um, public transit. So everyone's walking from show to show. So there's this real like group, whereas in LA, everyone's in their car driving from one place to the next. And it's just a very different feel. It's still good. It's just very different, you know? So like my only, my only kind of go-to is I've been to JFL. So I've been to JFL twice and that's that. Then I go in my mind, Canadian comedy is like JFL in Montreal, 24-7, 365. Like so, in my mind, every day is comedy Christmas. Every day. <laughs> every single day is comedy Christmas. We eat comedy turkey with, with yeah, lettuce. Yeah, every, yeah. <laughs> every single, every day. Every day, comes. Every no, day. JFL, what? Just for Last is like, I've been, I think, four times now. And it's like yeah. one of the, it's like camp mixed with Christmas mixed with drugs. You know what I mean? Like, it's like just this bundle of like, <laughs> awesomeness. You don't sleep. It's like all your idols are like brushing past you. You get to do shows. It's the best. It's, it's, it could not last for longer than it does because you would just be burnt out. Like, you would die. You would die. Camp, you know? camp mixed with Christmas, mixed with drugs. <laughs> Done. That's, I, I feel like that is, that is the, perfect, the, the perfect description. So <laughs> when, I, when I met you, I think, I think that, you know, comic to comic, one of the things you identify first in, in, in another comic, and maybe I speak for myself, is how much do you actually love this thing? Like, because, because comedians are so wonderfully in love with our craft, I, I almost feel like we are... We are naturally, we naturally want to associate with people who share that level of passion. So when I met you, I was like, yo, this person loves jokes. This person loves jokes. Aisha is the <laughs> alpha of jokes, of jokes, she loves jokes. And that's it, she just wants jokes in life, nothing else. Then you left South Africa and I don't know what microwave solution, but like it was on Instagram, it felt like three months. Maybe it was nine months, maybe it was nine months. But it felt like three months, and all of a sudden, you were like, pow, pow, baby. You were like, it was on your marks, get set, life, it's happening. Life is going on. <laughs> so so I, I then see the look you used to have for comedy um, is now the look you have for your little one. Oh, man. How, 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 tell me about, tell me about, because I don't have kids. Uh -huh. so, so tell me about, I, the only thing that I can understand true crazed obsession with is comedy. Mm -hmm. Tell me that having a kid is less important than comedy. Just tell me that. I can't, I can't tell you that. I can't do it. I can't do it, my friend. <laughs> Here's the thing, like, I, <clears throat> I love jokes, I do. I love, like, even if I wasn't a comedian, I would be the person who's like, I love it. Banter, yes ending, it's my thing. It's who I am. It's part of like the everything, part of hell. I didn't want to get married ever in life. I didn't think I would have kids. Um, cut to many years later when I met my now husband and was like, oh, I get it. Okay, this is just my person. This is my person for me. And then we got married and like instantly got pregnant. You know what I mean? So I was like, I guess I'm doing all the adult things now. So then, you know, you have this kid and I had a real period where I was like, oh man, 
like what's going to happen to my career? Am I going to be able to do comedy? Like what's, you know, and I think a lot of the people who I knew who had kids were all male comedians. So like their wives would stay home with the kid. And, you know, meanwhile, I'm having to go to shows with a struggle we don't discuss. Yeah. I'm going to shows breast pumping in the parking lot, like a creek. Do you know what I mean? Like the parking lot attendants, like, hello, are you okay? I'm like, ah, my boats are out. Please stay away. I'm fine. I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. Almost done. But the truth is like, you, like, I think anyone who has a kid will tell you that like, all of a sudden you realize nothing else really matters in the world, right? Because you have to keep this person alive. You have this overwhelming love for your kid, but there's so much funny in it. And there's so much drive. So now when I go to, like, people are asking me to do shows, I'm just, like, more selective. Because I'm like, well, I have this kid is the most important thing. So I think I'm more, like, ah. like I do maybe less shows. I can do less shows because I have less time, you know, now. But when I go, yeah. I'm like, a mama's out of the house. Like, let's do this, you know? Like, I'm like, I'm going to get there early. I'm going to chat with people. I'm going to stay a little bit late. Like, I'm just like, it's all, like, when I'm on comedy, I'm on comedy, like, focus, focus, focus. And then when I'm done comedy, I'm at home and I'm with my kid, who also is full of comedy. This kid is funny. Like, I'm telling you, he's good. Well, the kid got funny genes. Yeah, I think so. At least from my side. I don't know about my husband, but come on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a different, it's a totally different thing. And I still don't, I think it's like helping me in a lot of ways. And also obviously having a kid changes your schedule. Like I can do less stuff, but you know, there's a give, there's a pros and the cons. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do something incredibly unfair and say, what is the number one life lesson that having a kid has given you? It can be a lesson. It can be a realization, but when you, when you thought about it now, what's the number one thing that you are grateful for that you have learned because of having a kid could be from the kid. I mean, I think that, well, there's a couple things, to be honest. One of them that I'm realizing is, and I don't know if it's every comedian, but I always feel a little bit, I think it's the nature of comedy, a little bit like everything's going to come crashing down, right? That like you have a great show and you're on a high, then the next day you have a bomb and you're like, oh, what is life about? And it's real, like, you know, it's hard on the self-esteem. And so then it, sometimes it makes me question because I wasn't always a stand-up comedian. I w- it wasn't like I dreamed of that as a kid. Like I had a whole life where I was a professional athlete and all this kind of stuff before. But what I've learned is like watching my kid, I'm amazed by everything he does, right? Like he's so perfect. He's so like, has no shame, has no embarrassment, has no fear. And he doesn't care. He just does him. And he does, he's upset when he wants to be upset. He's laughing when he wants to be laughing. And what I realized is like, yeah, like if you just let yourself shine, like, from your inner core just directly out and stop putting all these blockages like I'm not funny or that wasn't funny or I shouldn't be doing this or no one cares or whatever then like some people aren't gonna like it but some people already don't like what I'm doing I re- I don't want to read those comments when you post a video you know what I mean like half of them are just like she's ugly we hate her and I'm like I haven't done anything yet but like just realizing that if you just like let yourself shine you're gonna be happy you're gonna be much happier as a person and like everything else will follow through. And if comedy never happened and never, not, never got another show, at least I'll be happy. Like that's just, you know. And also the other thing I think is that nothing really matters. Like we get so caught up in so many little things and in the end you're like, it doesn't matter. Nothing like that. Just, no, if I don't get that show, it doesn't really matter. I'll get another You are I, talking you know? to my soul. I feel right. like <laughs> uh, I, I, I hope, you know, I'm sure everybody's thought about this, but this is the first time I actually just thought about it. So let's get, give me a Wi-Fi because it's Wi-Fi, but it's, it's because that was profound. A Wi-Fi? A wi- not, a, not a high five, a wi- but Wi-Fi five. <laughs> a, a wi- me a wi- wi- Wi-Fi. Pa, pa, I love how we, we mistimed it. Wait, are we doing a Y10? Y10, ready? No, 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 no. Wi-Fi's, Wi-Fi's are mistimed because there's lag. There's the internet, can, there's lag. Wi-Fi, a synchronized Wi-Fi, very suspicious and not safe for COVID. <laughs> synchronized Wi-Fi, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the same thing at all. I, 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 I'm so, Man, I relate so hard to, to, to what you said, because I'm turning 40 uh, uh, this year. And one of the things about turning 40 is, I don't know, but somehow you just kind of become so conscious of time. Mm-hmm. And when I became so conscious of time, I became very conscious of who I spend my time with. Mm-hmm. And then I became conscious of whose opinion I care about and why. And, and it's, it's been this mission of mine to get to a space where as long as I kind of like me and like the yeah. human that I am. I really don't care what to think. And it's a difficult, it's a very difficult thing. It's not nice to say out loud. I can feel people cringing. As we say, <laughs> I can feel people say, 
What do you mean you don't care if I like you or not? And this is the truth. So like, if you don't, if you don't contribute to any of the bills in my house, it don't matter. <laughs> I'm just going to start matter. sending you a check for $3 so that my opinion has to matter. <laughs> <laughs> Done. I will accept. At the current exchange rate, that will pay for my car. I will accept. I accept your $3. My my final my final my final question and and as we as we wrap this up because you've been you've been so great so thank you again um, and we wish the the JICF is going to be back live it's going to be back power and and we're going to have you here and I and I can't wait for you to headline headline our stages uh, and 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 this is probably the most difficult thing of them all if you're to narrow all of it down COVID nineteen lockdown the whole traumatic experience. Give me your one takeout, and it can't be the same takeout that you took out with the kid, because that out is out. We need a new <laughs> Here, the, honestly, this is my real one, and I feel like it's not really profound or anything, but <clears throat> it's that, um, like, how important it is to stay connected with the people who are important to you. So, you know, I, I live in, in LA, where um, <laughs> none of my family is. My family is all in Canada or in Nigeria. My husband's family doesn't live in LA either. They're scattered throughout the States. A lot of my closest friends live around the world. So it's like, I actually, my closest network of people isn't here. Um, and now having a family and being stuck in our homes and all these life changes and stuff, what I realize is taking the time to connect with your best friends, with your family, even if you don't get along with them, just to stay connected is so, so, so important and i started to do like weekly like happy hour with like some of our friends where we just like for 45 minutes or something we get on every single week no matter what's going on no matter if it's having a bad day or whatever it is i've started writing like i used to do this all the time and it's kind of seems creepy to say but it's like a lovely thing i write people like friend love letters either in like an actual letter or in a text or an email where i'm just like hey, I've been thinking about you and here's all the things I appreciate about you. And here's why I think you're an amazing person. And sometimes I like well, send it. Who's the last person you wrote to? Who's the last, the last, person, the last person I wrote to was one of my friends who's a comedian here named Angie Stalker. And she is like a big, like, she's a mom, she's a comedian, she's a big advocate for weed. And she just like does her, like she does her. You know what I mean? She's like all about it. She has her whole, own whole thing going. And I wrote her this long text about how I'm like, I admire you and you're amazing. And then I hit send and instantly was like, Oh God, what have I done? Is that creepy? I shouldn't have done that. And then like her response back is like, oh my gosh, what a wonderful thing. You know, and I'm like, okay, okay, phew. Love, love rules. Love will conquer all. Everything is okay. <laughs> but it's like that. To love. avoid that, to avoid that anxiety in future, you should only press send at 420. Like, <laughs> 20 minutes past four, and you know all your messages will be I very really well received. Should have. That's like the be very well received. Time, you know? um, I, I, I want you to know that you may be isolated from your family, but your South African family, we still think about you. We can't wait to, to host you again. Um, and, and that's because you're funny. Nothing else. I can tell you <laughs> that in the world of comedy, your personality does not mean as much to us as how funny you are going to be on stage. And that's the truth. And I can also tell you that many, many comedians have not had the experience that you've had of the South African comedy industry, because like most comedy industries around the world, if you're not funny, we don't care about you and your stories. <laughs> if you don't have jokes, you can't play with us. <laughs> it's a very, very simple thing. So you got jokes. You can always come and play with us. On behalf of everybody at JICF, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, oh, thank you. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, you, boys and girls, the fabulous, phenomenal, Nigerian, Canadian, LA. Oh, I saw yes. Love you guys. Be well, be blessed, be strong, and, and just be safe through this time, man. We hope to see you in person soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Love you guys. Salute and away. Away. <laughs> oh, that last away was the best. <laughs> <laughs>